What is up, everybody? Welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. We have our usual standard roster here tonight. We have Eric. Are you calling me standard? It's like, St- standard isn't... It's, like, it's like, That's not a bad thing. I fixed this camera. This is way too high. There we go. Tom doing live camera adjustments. Our extraordinary nor- uh, normal cast members that are above average in intelligence and <laughs> podcasting ability to that i am clearly <laughs> below average and you all know it anyways eric is unhappy with my introduction tom tom is here with us today how do you feel i i'm i'm here i i have I have a little bit of wine and we're playing fancy league today Ooh, why nice. yes i He's do a have wine, wine. Is it that stuff yep. we was talking about previously? It is. It is indeed port because, like, I can't drink real wine because I don't like it because I'm a child. But port <laughs> is basically spicy grape juice. There's spicy literally nothing grape wrong juice. with it. Nice. It's delicious. I have a nice um, jasmine green tea. Ooh. Um, I, have I could never. People... Go ahead. I could never get into green tea. It tastes like socks. <laughs> I remember we. I knew that, I knew that was going to come yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> Cannot do the sock tea. Sock tea. I love sock tea. What are you drinking See, on I'm Eric? drinking what the locals call vitamin R, even though every time I hear that, I think Chevelle. I was going to say that's a um, Chevelle song from the, what, mid 2000s? But it's uh, Rainier. It's a local. Oh. Um, think Yingling to Pennsylvania is Rainier to this area. You know, I gotta say, it's not a terrible beer. Like, it's not amazing, but it's fine. It's completely serviceable. It's on par with like and a Bud generally Light to cheap. Me. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be thrilled about drinking it, but it could be drunk. Could be mad. Yeah. It, I mean, I comparing it to Yingling's not fair because Yingling actually does some stuff as a brewery outside of just yeah. piss water. <laughs> they also do like half and half and stuff. Yeah, Yingling is a really solid beer. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I haven't, I've been coming back. So the only time I drink anymore is on the podcast. So like I don't have the six packs of nice stuff recently. Though I really. I've been doing the same. The, the only time I drink is generally if a day ends in Y. <laughs> um, or if the sun has risen. Oh. Those are pretty hmm. sure bets, honestly. I, I that sounds like a good way to moderate. Yeah. Oh yeah. If the sun doesn't come up that day, I don't drink. That's just the way it works. I think if Some the sun doesn't crazy, come up but, at know. all, you should drink that day. <laughs> that's, that's the day you drink. Because <laughs> something is not right <laughs> and you might need that drink. Then again, that just means I need to bust out my Dracula outfit and go full Castlevania. Yes, I'd be drinking on that. So I know this is me. This is me being me and (laughs) over analyzing shit to the point of stupidity. But people always talk about when shit hits the fan. I need to have my alcohol. Man, if she is to fan, I want to be fucking sober. I don't know about you guys, but (laughs) it's probably going to rely on it. Yeah. But yeah, once again, me overanalyzing and ruining a good thing. That's what I do. <laughs> That's fine. It's what I'm good for. That's fine. Ah, so what you fellas been up to this week? Uh, uh, v- Vigi game. Vigi. Yeah, lots game of work. Things. I got a new little piece of hardware. Oh, what'd you get? Oh, I got. Uh, you guys would be proud. I got the Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet. Oh um, shit! Right here, I got it. It's it's right here. You can't see because the camera is taken by Streamlabs, but everybody else can see. Got a nice little case for it. It's perfect for our show notes. I've got our show notes on it right now. Um, Actually, that's a really good idea. I should probably do that. I also, I gotta... yeah. I also use it for Tarkov maps when we play, and I watched a couple movies. I watched um, I watched Drive the other day. Have you guys seen Drive? Um, if not, that's no. a good movie. I, I'd highly recommend it. I watched Drive and I watched Cabin in the Woods, which I know Eric, you've seen for sure. I'm Love pretty that sure movie. Tom's seen it. 
Yes, um, Cabin in the Woods is 10 out of 10. <laughs> but no, it's fine. Um, I wish it had regular Android on it, honestly, because installing apps and stuff is kind of annoying from the Amazon store. Um, so it's, it feels limited in that way. But if it's, you know, if you don't need like a super crazy tablet or whatever, like I just have it just so I can like, you know, watch movies sitting on the couch or whatever, or for an extra screen for when we're podcasting and stuff Portable like that. It's like, it's a big screen. Netflix machine. Yeah. And it's a giant screen for not very much money. It was very cheap. I think it was 80 bucks or something. Ow. We will take your analysis to the bank because I feel Tom and I are both going to stay mute. Yes. Yes, <laughs> Full disclosure, Cannot we work comment. for a company and we are not commenting on this device in any fashion. Oh, it's a device. It was $80. That is what I've heard. Facts can be stated <laughs> and that is where it is left. It has a 10-inch screen. You can watch Netflix on it. It yeah. has a web browser. Yeah. I will say though, um, I don't know if you can see. Oh, I'm I'm blocking it, but there's a package on the table there. That was the first one I ordered, which had a problem, so I had to get a. Oh. I'm exchanging it, which, by the way, I have to send the old device back with before like August 10th, 2021. <laughs> 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 which. <laughs> At first, at first, I got the thing that said, all right, you have to send this back by August 10th. And I'm like, it's August 18th. This doesn't compute. And then I saw that it said 2021. Like, what? <laughs> this doesn't compute even more. <laughs> I, I love the return policy for the company. Like, what's I, I to I, stop I somebody from just... Say that. What's to stop somebody from just ordering something and then, like, making up an issue... And using a free one basically for a year. I don't know. So I'm staying uh, mute. As, uh, as I know, as, <laughs> as other as other retailers would possibly do as well. Um, <laughs> like so, let's say Walmart.com does this. Yes. Uh, potentially, Walmart would know your account. So good customers might, you know, get too many times. Yeah. 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 If you're an asshole, they don't have to treat you nicely. Is what I've heard other retail stores do. Like for real though, like in person stores I've been to, I've absolutely seen that as well. But don't be an ass bag. I love the policy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like I I don't like tablets most of the time. I like the idea of having a small device at a super weak that doesn't cost much. That's why yeah. I like my Chromebook. Chromebook. Yeah. Yep. But I, the Chromebook. honestly, at this point, a good Android tablet, I think, might be more functional than a Chromebook. In certain, <laughs> in certain, in certain aspects. Maybe, yeah. That's possible. I don't, I don't usually like Android tablets, uh, many Android tablets, because of the supportability. They get a year's worth of updates, and then they're just security nightmares from then on. Well, and that's if where Android tablets it. suck. You have to pay, pay for a more expensive Android tablet if you want a longer shelf life on it. And yeah. then you're getting two years. Even the best ones get two years of updates and then die. Which you That's and right. I are different animals when it comes to that. Yeah. Tom doesn't care. I Eric am is like, yay, it still works. <laughs> so it's before the it run as is, let it be known before the podcast, we were talking a little bit during oh, the pre -cod podcast prep, and Eric was like, <laughs> Uh, I don't remember what you. What he, did you say? Said, but he mentioned his S7 phone, which was okay. And then he also mentioned, uh, you know, keeping tr track of his in-game FPS with Fraps. God damn it! So, dude, I'm a no frill guy. And, do what I need to do, and I'm not going to go away from you. Yeah, he's been I don't playing know. his MP3s with Winamp. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, have you played yeah, that, that really new game? Cool Blink 182. Man. Yeah, have you played that brand new game, Bioshock Infinite? God damn it! Actually, not much. But um. Oh, I thought you played so, Infinite. Wait, you, you just, just played Infinite? Bit. Oh, not all the way through. Okay. Oh, that's the so, part you need to play though. So full disclosure yeah, for you about my phone. It wasn't a bad game. The only reason I'm on an F7 is because my fucking Nexus 5 had a headphone jack break off in it. 
<laughs> and then I took <laughs> Gina's old phone. That's nice. That's why the headphone jack has been removed because of people like you. Like I'm walking onto the Amazon shuttle, just no big deal. And then my headphone cord caught a seat while I was walking, listening to my podcast. I'm like, thought nothing of it. I'm like, oh, it must have unplugged. And I go to plug it back in and I realize, oh shit, I don't have the tip of this thing. Is there it broke it off oh, God, inside the fucking phone? Speaking of, is there anything more blind rage inducing than listening to music and then the, the cord snags on something and it rips the headphone out of your ear? Dude, earbuds oh, instantly God. blind instantly rage. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to earbud anymore at work because that was awful. And I know like people, would, a lot of people are going to be like, Bluetooth headphones, idiot, stop uh, using corded headphones. But, you know, I can't be bothered to make sure my earbuds are like, always charged up. And, oh, no, what if I want to listen to it longer than the battery life lasts? Yeah, well, I well, don't that's... mind the idea of Bluetooth, but I need the option of cable because oh, I just, always want that $5 backup. Mm -hmm. Just carry your OG Apple AirPods TM and your brand new AirPods Pro. And that way, when one is charging, you can use the other one and you flip flop. Oh my God. Speaking of flip flop, Mr. Apple lover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, um, I, I like Bluetooth. I think Bluetooth's a good tech. But there are issues with anything electronic with batteries. Yeah, and I like having my hardwired headphones that I know, regardless, I plug it in, it's gonna work. I'm a curmudgeon. I have so I I absolutely was on that side of the fence for years. I've come around to Bluetooth. I uh, started out with these Bose headphones, which actually are pretty nice, and the Bluetooth lets you connect a whole bunch of shit. It's got a button that lets me flip input. So if I hit a button right now, or if I unplug this and then hit a button. It'll flip from my PC to my phone to my Kindle to my work laptop. I've got four or five different devices all loaded in here as profiles. It works really well. These are fine. They're earbuds. But I don't have any Bluetooth issues anymore. Very rarely will I encounter something. I've been pleasantly surprised by the Bluetooth ecosystem. I like Bluetooth. I used Bluetooth. Uh, so it's not an anti-Bluetooth. It's uh, anti, anti-analog. <laughs> I, okay. mean, I mean, that, that like, was a really awful statement, but it makes sense. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, I love headphone jacks. I really love the headphone jack. It is the, the universal way to connect or to get audio output on a device. It's, it's I would argue, perfect. But... It's not really convenient, and I have broken enough headphone cables and pulled out on this show this cable so many times. Bluetooth is just way more convenient most of the time. I've only broken one. Oh, I break cables like I've never once a month broken a headphone cable. Really? What am I doing? I've had he now I've I had headphones stop working, but I've never straight up broke the cable. Yeah, that's different because I mean I, you, you'll have that eventually on Bluetooth shit too. Yeah, yeah. There's inevitably no, going to be like, hardware hardware failure. I, I will absolutely short out the cords all the time. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I've had yeah I've had cords short out before. I've done that with earbuds. That's true. But yeah, that's because I neglect that. the shit out of them because I pay five dollars yeah. for them. Yeah, I actually try and to buy decent me, like, earbuds. Like not nothing crazy, it's but like I've got I got a pair of Sony earbuds. They were like thirty bucks or something, but they sound good. I just I know how I treat them. I wad them up. I put them in my pocket. I'm yeah. not gonna get nice earbuds. It's it's That's... worth the sound difference though, because you don't have to pay that much more to get something that actually sounds decent. If I want something to sound really crisp, I'm not using earbuds in the first place. Well, yeah, but there are situations where you kind of have to use earbuds, and I would prefer it to sound as good as possible in that context. So I don't not care a, that much. But I'm oh, like it's... I'm like a music audio guy, though. So yes. it's a, yeah. there's you're, a little bit difference the there. The you are the Tom like, of purity uh, when it comes to audio. So when I'm listening to music at work, the few times I'm able to do so. 
I can wear one headphone, but I can't really wear both for safety reasons. And I will actually go into the phone's accessibility settings and change the output audio to mono so that I'm not missing any music on stuff that has different things left and right side. I, I agree with that. I'm not even that huge of an audio quality guy, but you'll literally miss parts of the song if yeah. you leave it in stereo. Mm -hmm. That said, it sucks listening to mono when you have stereo ability. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ah, but yeah. So um, I found out something fun this week. What's that? Leftover steak is great in the morning. Yeah. Steak Dude, and eggs. eggs, baby. Yeah. I um, I diced up some potatoes, fried that shit up, got some um, steak, stripped it out, and then uh, scrambled some eggs on top of all of it together, put it inside a tortilla. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. Dude, that was a that fucking sounds great breakfast burrito. Yeah. I didn't have any of the nice little uh, optional things. Like I didn't have onion on me, didn't have red pepper, didn't have so, any pepper. You got to work with what you have. Yeah. And, you like, know, I think steak nice doesn't need anything else. It's nice to have some onions and stuff with your, you know, steak and egg burrito or whatever. But, I mean, yeah, steak I, and I eggs, some, how bad could that be? Some diced up jalapenos, some diced up onions thrown in there at the end. Oh, that would have. Yeah. And I put some uh, sh uh, shredded cheddar on top. Shredded Mild cheddar. 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 That cheddar. Oh, I was so ready Big for that. Big guy. <laughs> oh, so um, I had a cheeseburger that had a pomegranate on it. <laughs> oh, you ordered that. How was yeah. that? It was actually good. Uh, so it didn't have a lot of pomegranate on it, right? But there were some pomegranate pearls straight up on the burger, and it had this sauce that I'm sure they used some sort of pomegranate in it. It wasn't like overtly, ah, oh, this tastes like pomegranate. But the whatever sauce they had on it was like a, it was kind of like a normal burger sauce or whatever. Um, but it was kind of tangy, just just a touch sweet. It wasn't like a sweet, sweet burger or anything. But it actually worked. It was surprising. So, um, pomegranate. I want to get the Proto Chicks comment after this. But mm. pomegranate on a burger. Was it actually like legitimately, you said the little pieces yeah, of pomegranate? Yeah, the little like pearls. Yeah. Is that what they're called? No, but that's just what they might make me uh, Okay, okay. Of. No, that's fine. I was just honestly curious. I have no clue what they're fucking called. <laughs> um, yeah, it actually had like, some of those on the burger, which the texture is kind of weird because every once in a while. They have don't they? Uh, no, I mean, you can still chew them, but yeah, there is a little bit of. I don't know how to describe the texture exactly. Have you ever ate a raw pomegranate? Yeah. So like each right. one of those, you like really end up good. spitting it back out. You're effectively drinking it when you eat it. Because like the inside of each of those have a little pit in it. Um, I, I ate them when I ate a pomegranate. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Maybe I'm <laughs> weird. Okay. Never mind, but like I'm... You're paid when you Either way. But no, it was interesting. And uh, I had to try it because, I mean, do you see a, a wild combination like that on the menu? You got you to try it, right? Yeah, you got to so, go for it. Yeah. Would you get like it again? Would I get it again? Yeah, sure. I mean, the place literally has four burgers to choose from. So, you know, if I get that so place enough times, I'm eventually going to get it again anyway. Okay. I want to get back to steak for a second. Steak. Uh, Part of tricks got to a question that I want to get to, but first, how do you guys take it? Medium rare, mostly. Yeah. Pepper, medium rare. Okay. So we're, we're sometimes garlic and onion powder. I'm okay with all, medium well, too, or medium or whatever, but. So we're all medium I, rare. Yeah, it's good. Um, Tom likes limited seasoning, garlic, onion, pepper most. I, I tend to be the same boat. Uh, but how do you feel about sauces? I'm good with sauces. I'm not opposed you know, to sauces. So I don't do a one. Yes, yeah, so I've had this. But I've had as, this conversation before, and I'm not. I'm not opposed to people putting sauces on their steak, even ketchup. Like I, I don't do it personally, but 
if that's your jam, you're not hurting yeah. me by putting yeah. stuff on a stake. Yeah. Like it's your fucking stake. Yeah. I, I'm finished. I'm getting to the realm of do with it what you want. That said, if you see me put ketchup on a steak, that steak is beyond fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I can get she... behind a sauce if it's like a specialty sauce made for the steak to complement yeah. the meal. Yeah. Benavi well, points me, out, I'm the blasphemous one who puts A1 sauce on my steak too. Had to be honest about my shortcomings. There's nothing wrong with putting A1 on a steak. I actually like A1. Like as a sauce, I think it's good. It's really bitey, tangy. I like it. I don't. Mm, I don't care for it that much. It's fine. So, as as a kid, when I would have like loaded baked potato, steak, green beans, I'd straight up like make mashed potatoes out of my loaded baked potato with like all the cheese and sour cream and everything else, and fucking dip my steak into that mess. Like make yes. make like you yes. would do Thanksgiving casserole. Mix that shit together. Sour cream on a steak, criminally underrated. I'm going to say it. It's going to come out. Huh. I like sour cream on a steak. I've, I don't add it like directly with a potato and all that shit. Oh, yeah. I've never even heard of it. It's so fucking good. Like, I know a butter on like, steak, but I've never heard of sour yeah. cream. That's so, like, different. Don't, yeah. don't do it just like alone. Like, you do have to mash up your baked potato in your sour cream and oh, butter. Oh, okay, okay. So like, it's, it's a whole thing. The collect. It's a process. Gotcha. Yeah, so what I what we've been doing is when Friday night we end up cooking some form of meat nice or like tenderloin or steak or something. And we typically have some kind of potato and stuffing. So like I always do like a fork of stuffing and meat together every time. Oh hell I love yeah. doing that. It's like a little but sandwich kind of. Yeah. Like a pre-chewed sandwich. I'll, I was a kid growing up that you cut everything up, have it on the plate, and then you mix everything into your mashed potatoes and eat it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Green beans I, in your mashed potatoes. Corn in your mashed potatoes. Corn in mashed sure. potatoes is so fucking good. I used to mix mac and There's cheese and baked beans together. Tom, I agree that is the best thing they make, but what did you say, Adam? I used to mix my uh, mac and cheese and baked beans together as a kid. I'm not a Yeah, that big... sounds good. I think maybe two or three times in my life, I have went through like some kind of or line at a barbecue and got baked beans like yeah. i just don't pick them up i don't hate them i just never get them ever i love baked beans i get them when there's barbecue see renee like she goes full british man she'll like throw baked beans on toast and that's like the best thing ever i never understood it like i get it kind of i can imagine it being good but it's not something I've ever gone for. My my grandpa always did that. He would do what we call butter butter beans and put it over bread. Mm -hmm. He would put gravy over toast. Actually, we used to have a meal. It would be dry beef gravy, and we just smother it on toast and eat that for dinner. <laughs> so good. Doesn't sound bad, actually. So good. I think some places call it shit on a shingle. Yep, there it is. Dobby just said it in chat. Yeah, shit on a shingle. Shit on a shingle. So what do we have for dinner tonight, Mom? <laughs> oh, you know, the usual shit on a shingle. Dude, I loved it because, like, we had legit home-cooked every fucking night. But when it was shit on a shingle night, you put the toaster on the table, the loaf of bread on the table, and you just toasted it right there and just kept going with the big skillet full of fucking gravy with um dried beef yes, in yeah, it. Yeah, you're, you're always, getting, always getting, like, super hot, super fresh toast. Oh, so good nothing to hate about that i mean it was awful for you but it's a cheap meal and it's really good nutritional values are most void but it fills you up <laughs> you also did toast with turkey hot shots i don't know what a turkey hot shot is. i don't know what that Do means was that oh, some kind of pokemon turkey hot shot is <laughs> yes it's an open-faced turkey sandwich covered in gravy oh okay okay i can get on that Turkey, mashed potato, bread, maybe. Typically when I eat turkey. Maybe, maybe yes. Most of the time when I get turkey, it's at holidays when it's been butchered and it's dry. So the idea of putting it on yeah. toast with gravy sounds pretty good. The, the, the turkey is my least favorite part about Thanksgiving dinner. I, I, I think turkey, turkey is so lame. much. I don't like turkey that much. I think it's overrated. Turkey gets a bad rap because yeah, people it. fuck it up. And that might be the reason, yeah. but something about it, I just 
You, yeah. you cook a turkey right, it's juicy, it's flavorful, it's not like this bland, tasteless jerky that masquerades mm -hmm. as dinner meat. Like when I watched Dalton Brown talk about cooking turkeys, he was taking it, making an aluminum foil shield to put over the breast area to make sure it didn't overcook while the rest of the stuff was cooking. And I'm thinking to myself, no one in my family has ever done that. Is that why <laughs> our shit sucked? Because <laughs> you have to think different zones of the bird cook at different temps at different rates. So you need to do something because you can't just put the entire fucking thing in there and say magically work. I don't, I so, don't know if you have that infomercial rotisserie thing from the late 90s you could just set it and forget it damn it what what i do love is so you don't do the full turkey like if you're doing a small thanksgiving dinner you can pick up just frozen turkey breast just big ass hunk of turkey put in the slow cooker in a bag turn that shit on and like eight hours later you've done no work and you can just add stuffing mashed potatoes all that quick shit you got thanksgiving dinner we do that a lot. Yeah. Right. And the turkey's always fantastic. Fantastic. No, we, we, just, we just did a lot of food. We did a lot of food. This is I, a video game podcast. I'm going to be buying things. Sometimes. Later. Like, this is possibly the most we've talked food since we've stopped having three hour long podcasts. I mean, at this point, it's a mistake. <laughs> so, that said, your boys got any games? Turkey. Turkey. Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3000. That sounds I, awful. I tried out a uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's on the Game Pass. What'd you think? Um, so I, I didn't get a lot of time with it, so I don't want to judge it too harshly. But initially, my impression was bad because uh, I couldn't get the game to work. I had to keep like relaunching it and stuff before it would actually load all the way into the oh. menu and stuff. Cool. Um, and then uh, the, the second misplay, which is my fault, is I tried to play it on keyboard and mouse, which was possibly the worst yeah. control I could think of. <laughs> Not to mention oh. that, like, it, it's it's flight simulator, right? It's super yeah. realistic. And I'm just like, ace combat, yeah! So... <laughs> uh, to it, was fair, a, it was a I lot to get I used to. to. Like, the controls are not intuitive, on 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 the keyboard and mouse because there are just so many controls, which is what you need in the simulator game. I heard not it's a fully really functioning cockpit. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's not meant to be. Um, but if you wanted it, it's, it's combat. Yeah, it does some things that I think are really cool. Um, I guess one of those things is I guess they do like real time actual flight traffic. That's cool. So that's I've, pretty neat. I've heard there's entire Discord servers being stood up to function as air traffic controller, and they're doing an entire flight world thing with them. Wow. Uh, it's it's actually way bigger than that. And this is this has been a thing since uh, the previous gen, which came out forever ago. You actually pay, um, I want to say it's 20 to 30 a month, to get access to people... Um, dedicating their time to act like flight towers and they will literally sit at the flight towers and angle people in give them clearance for takeoff landing uh, stuff like that and you're actually on the radio in game with them uh, but you only get access to that channel if you pay the service fee which they used to pay the people dedicating their time and all the servers and stuff um so yeah you can get really into this one of the big streamers i watch uh actually does this he pays a lot of money and it's got a full flight set up and he flies commercial airline or aircraft sitting there at his desk. That's cool. Switch. That's nice. really neat. Uh, Prototrix calls out that other games have done this before. FXX mm. and X-Plane. Uh, yeah. yeah, but those yeah, games I weren't... Actually, I was about to put my foot in my mouth for something I didn't know. I'm assuming those games weren't free. Yeah. Well, neither is Flight Simulator. Well, true ish. I mean, okay, it's on Game Pass, but that does not mean the game is free. It is a full right. sixty dollars. Yeah, it's, it's release. A that, that, that is true. That is that is true. I I have this nasty habit of lumping things that are on Game Pass as free when yeah. it's technically a paid service. Netflix movies aren't free. You're paying for right. Netflix. Yeah, but um, 
So yeah, I'm not very familiar with the the flight sim genre, I guess. Uh, but it was pretty cool. I didn't play much of it. I did a couple of um, like free flights with all the the flight assist stuff on. Once I finally plugged the controller in, I could actually control the plane reliably somewhat. Um, so I just kind of flew around. I tried to fly over my like where I live, and I, and I started to realize that I. I don't know what it looks like from a bird's eye view, so it's hard to identify <laughs> certain things. Like what? you can, you, never, like, you can you take never Google off Google Maps where you live. Yeah, but I mean, like, not to the point where I'm going to recognize it from, you know, ten thousand feet up or whatever. But you you can you can take off from any airport you want. Um, but it doesn't, like, it doesn't get more granular than that on the map. So I would have to like actually navigate from that airport over my neighborhood or whatever. And I'm really bad at directions, so that is not my forte. But I thought it was kind of cool. Um, I did try to fly over the North Pole <laughs> just to see what it would look like. Um, oh. But unfortunately, the map on that part was kind of low res, like what you would expect like when you go to Google Earth or Google Maps on an area that isn't, you know very populated uh you're not going to get as detailed of of terrain and maps and everything like that so yeah you, you do get some of that um, but it's cool you can you on the free flight you can take off and and fly wherever you want it's pretty cool to see um and then i did just like maybe half of the first tutorial part where they kind of go over the the <laughs> process of controlling the plane and stuff and it seems like it's really in depth like if you were to really actually want to learn how to fly this would be a good way to kind of like that first step of this is how the process goes these are the things that happen and then after that you know it might be a good idea to to try it out to see if you if you actually are looking to get a private pilot's license or something like this would be a good idea like a good thing to try first to be like is this intriguing do i want to do this for real like it's kind of cool I yeah, like really enjoyed Flight Sim. Um, I I tried it out as well, and you're right. the The controls they're they're not intuitive. They're also not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's it's simulator first and foremost. If you're going mm -hmm. into this like, oh, I'm gonna just take a 747 and fly it around like I play Rocket League. No, no, no it's not you're that. Not. Like you're there to learn. <laughs> you will have how to, a bad. Time. You're there to learn how to actually fly a plane, more or less, right? Like it's a sim it's obviously a video game and it's still a simulation and stuff, but like it's it's for that. It's not just you know, Ace Combat, Google Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So that I um did really enjoy the maps, the streaming data, the real time weather mm -hmm. and traffic. Uh, it was yeah. cool. I, I took off from from SeaTac down the road and uh, yeah down the road I took off from SeaTac. It was cool. I looked out my window. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of overcast. And I get to see tech. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of overcast. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's Seattle. <laughs> That's right. That's cool. Weather. Um, I heard people were neat. flying into like the hurricane and shit. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. I have yeah, to look, um, yeah, have so to look more into it. Controls are absolutely a pain in the ass if you're expecting to just get in and fly around, which you yeah. can sort of almost do mm -hmm. after you figure out how to take off <laughs> um yeah tom do you have a hotel uh, yes yeah but i did not try it yet with flight sim okay you... I, I played it first sitting here on parsec which by the way that game is really fucking difficult to run i was averaging 40 fps most of the time um and I've got kind of a, a beefy PC. I run VR stuff on the highest uh, highest quality and 120 frames per second most of the time. And this was giving me 40 on medium. So I know <laughs> yeah. a lot of the big sites were coming out saying like they've done a lot of different testing and the best they're able to consistently get is like 45. Yeah. I noticed it, it jumped Which up and down quite sense. a bit. So the, the reason it makes sense is that it's not a game that's making stuff to make it look like it's, you know, realistic, right? Like Rocket League is not using super accurate physics 
if, if you've ever played Rocket League, you understand that it's, you know, it makes sense it's in its own world, mm -hmm. but it's not, quote, realistic, yeah. right? Um, but Microsoft Flight Sim and most other good simulator games are going for realism above all else. So when that plane takes off, when you are changing flaps, when you are changing the trim on something, when you're trying to shift left to right or balance engine output, yeah, it's doing all that math and physics processing in real time. It's actually kind of a goddamn miracle it runs at 40 frames at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, that's what you need that new 3090 for that's supposed to be coming in at fucking $2,000. Oh yeah. Supposed to, supposedly around $2,000 takes up three slots. Oh. What the hell? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and it's... Oh God, three and it, I, no. I can't remember. It was an odd number of RAM or amount of RAM. It was like, um, or maybe it wasn't an odd number. Maybe it was like 20. Well, I mean, for RAM, it was 24 or something like that, I think. Hmm. On board. Jesus. That's a lot yeah, of video was, RAM. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I mean, you're paying yeah, $2,000 for a fucking graphics card. Mm -hmm. Man, they're starting to get so fucking expensive. Yeah. But yeah. Kind of like the, the 2080 isn't long in the tooth at all, right? If like because I'm running a 2080 right now, uh, I don't see myself upgrading for several years at least. Mm -hmm. At least three. I'm on a 1080 right now, so I'll be upgrading it. But my fear is like if the 2030 is costing 2000, what's the 2080 gonna run? Oh, the 3080, yeah, 3080. Sorry, yeah. And uh, to Dobby's point, when I was saying odd, I didn't mean like mathematically odd. I meant odd as in strange, because typically RAM comes in um, a binary counting: one, two, one, base yeah, two. base two, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Twenty-four does not fit into that scheme. Yeah, it it would make more sense for it to be thirty-six gigs of RAM. Thirty-two gigs. Of Thirty-four RAM. is indeed weird. Yeah, yeah, thirty-two. But yeah, that's. But either way, um, I'm tempted to pick up Game Pass to run Flight Sim. Doesn't it? Uh, I mean, it's it's worth a shot. Um, you might be able to get Game Pass so, for a dollar. So there's that. Clear. It is 100 some, gigs. Some hard drive space. Yeah. Uh, it's 100 gigs initially. It's more like two, 200 to 250 once you get the in-game downloads done. So you've got to install it and then do the in-game uh, like cache creation slash initial download stuff. And I'm not too surprised. No, no, no that's a lot of data. This is the new crisis. Do you guys see that they found a uh, second monolith? No. <laughs> I, I didn't read the details. I saw the headline and saw the picture of it. It wasn't in a city area, so it was like a small little area where there's yeah. some small buildings. And then, bam, here's a monolith. <laughs> I love that. Is it a graphical bug or what was it? No, no, no it's no, just it's open kind street of a map data type. Just... Yeah. So, but really cool. Um, Scott's saying that they have some raised lakes, so I'm got to see some of that yeah. stuff. That would be kind of fun to watch. Like, oh, the water's higher than the walls. What's interesting is when you first start up the game, it says, "Hey, do you have a data cap?" How much data should we use before we just stop? Like it gives you, it forces you to make that choice <laughs> yeah. up front, which is really great. And then you can check a box that says, no, I don't have any data caps. And then it goes, really? Are you sure? Are, Are you, you sure? Absolutely sure. This could cost you a lot of oh, money. <laughs> I've heard this wrecks caps, dude. Oh, I'm sure it does. Oh, yeah. you use the data streaming ability. Well, but, if, um, you, if you have a cap and you're using the data streaming, you should rethink your decisions <laughs> well they may not know yeah. so i mean i like the fact we're doing this you can say hey only stream 50 gigs of data and after it hits that mark it'll stop and then you tell the game hey keep a local cache file so the most recent stuff you've streamed i've got locally so once it streams at once once you've got that data it'll slot it into whatever size cache you've set up for yourself and it'll keep it there so if you know you're flying you know LAX to, to SeaTac and you want that stuff cached and nothing else, that's all you really need, right? It, it allows you to really control how your data is 
is being consumed, which is really, really nice. It's definitely more of a power user feature, but it's a nice feature. Well, if, if you're somebody who's going to play Microsoft Flight Simulator seriously, this is the kind of stuff that you... Yeah, you, you're probably going to be more of a power user. Yeah. This is not a casual, casual game. Not at all. But, um, yeah. Seems cool. Um, would really like some VR in it, but... Do you have a dog fighting ring going yeah. on in your house, Eric? I couldn't mute because I started talking and it'd be weird for me to cut out mid mute or conversation. <laughs> it's the damn pup. The damn pup's vocal. You guys got a bookie or anything? We got Michael Vick over here <laughs> hanging out with us. So, so uh, okay, what, I was so what games have you? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, if, if it's running on medium, 1080p, 40 frames per second. I don't think we're going to see VR for Flight Simulator in a very, very long time. Dude, I'm good with 10 frames. Let's do this shit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, no. Nothing bad can happen. VR, but you, don't, you don't want that. Uh, but yeah, um, I think that's pretty much Flight Sim. We've hit that. Yeah. What else um, have you guys been playing this week? I've been doing some Fall Guys. A fall little bit. Fall Guys. And I really wanted to bring this up because... They leaked at GamesCon what they're doing for season two. And I want more games to do this. I think uh, Path of Exile kind of does it in a way. But they are theming season two. Season two is a medieval theme. So there's new rounds that incorporate castles and other medieval theme kind of um, schemes. The costumes are dragons and knights and witches and old-timey dress. So like they're this entire season, they are going with the theme of medieval, which is awesome. I want more games to do that. Like season three is like all oh, space. So it's going to be all, sp- I mean, that's figuratively, like I don't know what it actually is, mm-hmm. but just something like that. It'll add so much flavor to the game during these seasons to bring people back mm-hmm. new levels, new things to look at new ca- uh, costumes. So one of these levels, uh, you know, DoorDash, anyone who's played, um, Fall Guys knows DoorDash. I'm sorry, but you anytime like, anybody says DoorDash, I just think of the food delivery service. Uh, understandable. But so there's like seven doors. Three of them you'll be able to bust through. The other four are fake. And then there's seven. six doors. Three are real. And then like it keeps dwindling down. So at the very end, there's three doors and only one's real. Well, it's the same layout, but instead you have to go over a wall. And to get over a wall, you have to drag these blocks to be able to climb on. So a free-for-all game where things have to be maneuvered in a way to where people can get over a wall. <laughs> Who's going to do the maneuvering to the other people? You know, I mean, yeah, it's going to add some really fun elements to it. And a breath of fresh air, new rounds. That's what I was talking about when I said this game needs to do something or it's going to die in two months. And that's it. They need more changes in the game like this. To keep it fresh. If they change out rounds every time they do a season, I a they'll have a big archive of rounds that can add in, but it'll keep it fresh. It'll keep this game alive a lot longer. Yeah, it needs it needs uh, definitely more. I think rotating games and stuff. That's at least that's so, the sentiment I've been hearing from everybody that's played it. I have not played it. Yeah, disclaimer. And but. I agree. I enjoy it still. I still play it, but. It, this variation is going to be really, really good for the game. And also, they're talking about season two. The game hasn't been out for a month yet. So, I mean, so if how quick are these seasons going to be? Season, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that could be really cool because that means this game could be changing a lot. But yeah, I was doing the fall, guys. Good times. I, oh, I, um, recorded my first hacker and uh, ran into two of them. So this dude was flying, so he didn't have to worry about anything, and he knew all the paths to take. So, uh, yeah, who everyone hacks, got wrecked by this dude. Who hacks really, in a game like Fall Guys? That is so stupid. <laughs> it's it's happening bad enough that Fall Guys had to implement something. So they were banning people after games. It's gotten so bad that they said now upon detection, we're instantly booting people. Huh. Yeah, 
So they are instantly yeeting people out of the lobby when they detect them at cheating. Good. So I, I like seeing that. We'll see how well it works and how smart these cheaters get. Because I've also seen people where they didn't cheat the entire match, and then the final round they turn on their cheat. Oh. Uh... And it just sucks, man. Like you kick ass, you're on the final round, and then all of a sudden this dude just warps to the win. Like, it's Literally like warps. Party or some shit. Yeah, like, that's so dumb. And the whole point of getting the costume, especially like the crown ones, is to show off, hey, I win, I'm good. Yeah. If you cheat to do it, what the fuck's the point? I don't it's know. like well, buying ranks. Sizes of various body parts that they have. People with unfortunately large ears, I can see being cheaters. Or <laughs> small. Noses. Noses, of course. <laughs> Fortunately. For people with little thin necks. <laughs> really thin neck bitches cheating fall guys. <laughs> little bitches. Uh, so what right. else? What else you guys been doing? Um, I played uh, a it's Tarkov. Simulator. You played what simulator? It's just walking simulator. Oh. What, what was what? that? Um, it's called the... Sorry, I just saw your message. Um, it's called the Beginner's Guide, and it came out forever oh, ago. So the guy yeah. who made the Stanley Parent beginner's guide so i've been playing that again because i watched a video on it and then couldn't help but load it up and fire it up again uh if you're not into super pretentious artsy death of the author analysis walking simulators don't buy it uh, otherwise it's a really good game all right anything particular or just that's eh, a good game check it out yeah, that's that's it's got it. a lot of Have fourth wall breaking about the game? Uh, no, the Stanley Parable does, but the Beginner's Guide does not. The okay. Beginner's Guide doesn't really have a wall, per se. It's not structured as a like, playable documentary slash exploration of a theme mm -hmm. um, where there is a narrator who knows you're playing and talks to you, but not in the Stanley Parable, oh, this is fun, we're making gags at the player. It's more of a, look at this thing, I think this theme means this. Okay. More like a museum tour than a on fourth wall break gag sort of game. Okay. Huh. So, what about it? Would you say is pretentious? <laughs> um. Okay. So, <laughs> this is this is gonna get deep into the weeds of of story stuff and about the game. The game is an analysis of a person who uh, their games who may or may not exist or be the same person as the author. There's an unreliable narrator and a constant push-pull between this person who may or may not exist in their games and work mm -hmm. and author slash narrator who isn't the same person that made the game because that's got weird... Like, it's it's a thing. It's all about, like, death of the author and that the author of a piece is not necessarily the same thing as the narrator and how you interpret that can change how you feel about certain actions or subjects in the game. That sounds interesting. So I, I, why is that pretentious? <laughs> it is. Like, like play it. It's absolutely a pretentious art game. Now, I'm I'm saying pretentious, but not in like I'm not ragging on it. It just uh -huh. is. It is absolutely a pretentious art game. Um, I love those. Those can are we, great. Can we, the, gotta say, can we define pretentious? Uh yeah, very um, very navel gazy, very intellectual for the sake of intellectual art theory analysis. Like it's not, Ooh, this is fun game. I'm fall guys and I'm having a good time. This is, this is an interesting concept that we need to analyze with like art theory stuff. I mean, cause you I don't see that as pretentious really headsy game without being pretentious. Now being headsy for the sake of being headsy. I, yeah, I can kind of say that is, but, but that's, you can, but that's assuming the the intentions of the artist or the person that made it, right? Yeah. And it was specifically designed to do that. This it's not it's really difficult to classify this because it doesn't play like a game. Um 
it plays like a documentary. All right. Okay. So just weird. So one, I like to me the idea of being able to be a headsy game without like um, Hellblade. Hellblade was very well done. I thought it was really rad concept behind it. It was invest in going into something with i don't know what i can say what i can't but in general it wasn't a pretentious game but it was going into a complex thing to discuss yes but so that's what i'm saying like it is possible hellblade was ultimately game it had gameplay the beginner's guide doesn't really like in in one game um you walk and one of the levels that's created is designer created the game that you would walk into a jail cell and the door wouldn't open for an hour in a real time hour you would sit there and wait in a jail cell um and the author says yeah i never really saw the point in this so we're just going to change it and we'll open the door early and then there's this big push pull between you know it, does that change even though it's good for gameplay and it's good for the users. Does it change what that actually means and says about the themes of the game? Like maybe, maybe the prison isn't a place to get stuck. Maybe it's not a prison. Maybe it's like a respite, a place to stop and catch your breath and collect your thoughts, right? Maybe there's a reason why Coda, this you know imaginary developer, built prisons and stuff like this that wasn't bad. But because the narrator is telling you it is bad, it's fundamentally changing the, the nature of their work. I mean, I don't see that as, I mean, I, without playing it, I can't really say one way or another, but I don't necessarily think that has to be a pretentious thing. It's just a cerebral thing. Yeah, it's, it's like, like, I totally, totally recommend playing this. It's cheap, especially if you like these sorts of games. Um, you will get a lot of enjoyment out of it. If you do not like things like Gone Home, um, don't. What if you like Stanley set. Parable? If you like Stanley Parable, this is... So if you like Stanley Parable for the sheer funny moments and the cool narration, no. No, don't okay. like this. If you like Stanley Parable because of what it said about industry trends, game design, and how designers and players interact with each other and the intersection of those systems, let's play the beginner's guide. Okay. Nice. So, beginner's guide. Game people check out if you like Dearesterous kind of games. So it's also cheap as shit. Always a good note. Um, so other games. I know you've been running oh. some Tarky, Adam. Uh yeah, that's that's about it. Still on the Tarkov grind. Nothing. I don't know, nothing Anything a whole notable? lot to not really. Nothing that I can think of. I've made a decent amount of money this week just logging in and messing with my hideout and not actually playing the game. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've been doing that a lot. But no, other than that, nothing really too crazy or exciting or new to, to share, unfortunately. All right. I lost my first big gun I made for myself. Oh, I don't want to say big. That always feels but like I, I decked it out, had a 60 rounder on it and everything. Uh huh. And then I insta died. Oh, or damn near. No, so never mind. That was the second one I insta died. But yeah. If there's so. anything that Tarkov can teach you is detachment and Zen and <laughs> <laughs> it's very, uh, you know, like it's very Buddhist <laughs> in, uh, in its philosophy of, uh, you know, acceptance and not attachment of, of, of material things and, you know, just kind of dealing with, with things as they are. The art of letting go, yeah. right? <laughs> I played probably for like five hours today. And yeah. most of the time went really well. But the last hour and a half went bad. And man, that just puts a whole like feel of the entire session. Yeah. I had kind of but, the opposite day. I think I had exactly... I played about the same amount of time you did. And I had exactly two raids go what I would consider well. <laughs> so there was a lot of uh learning to let go of some things in between all of that <laughs> yeah i get it uh also did i've been doing some rocket league and they 
I think we all have technically right now. Um, they announced how they're reworking their challenges and drop system, which is going to be interesting. Uh, oh. Going forward, once it's free to play, old crate items or blueprint items will actually be droppable items. So you can get dueling dragons as a drop. But now drops don't come at levels. They come at completing challenges. Everyone's going to get X amount of challenges a week to do. And then once you're done with those, you get no more item drops that week. Huh. I think, I, I mean, I don't play it a lot, but I think that's something close to how Overwatch does. You get so many drops a day or a week and that's it. So that's going to change it. But that's also because now they're adding in what people view as high quality items into the pool. Okay. I also think this helps with the other, you know, another, it's not huge that I've seen, but another issue that Rocket League has, which is bot idlers sitting there and farming items. Um, yeah. Because like, if you've got to do challenges, it's not just time played and XP and match. If you have to do stuff to get the drops, yeah, that's going to be harder for these idle bots to pull off because they, they're they not just taking up slots. They actually have what? to, you know, play. Yeah, so they're doing challenges on the weekly basis with a premium and free version. Premium would be anyone who has a rocket pass. Mm -hmm. And then they're doing seasonal challenges. So those, like your weeklies will be something like, hey, score 10 goals this week. But your seasonals will be win 100 matches this season. So they're much more That'll substantial. So what are they doing with the blueprints then? Or are these going to be blueprint drops? Like, or these are just straight up the item drops, right? They, the way they worded it, like I even at, or misunderstood and Bird copy pasted and I read what he pasted and it, it reads that it would be the items. Okay. Huh. Um, that said, this also means something pretty interesting uh, for trade-ups. So right now, if you trade up five very rares, you're getting a painted car or a painted boost because that's the only exotic level items. Once these crate items come in, you're going to start having all those exotics in the pool for trade-in. Okay. So no long, like your chance of getting a white octane on that trade-in right now is probably something like 2%, if that. It's going to drop down to like less than a tenth of a percent. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you add a bunch of items to a pool, your chances of getting a specific item that you're looking for drastically decreases. But yeah, uh, aren't they also going to allow trade ups into like the black market items and stuff too? They've or oh, I should say they already. Actually, do they do that already? They do that with the blueprints no. already. The blueprints you can already do. Oh, that. okay, yeah. But I don't know about the core items. Okay. Hey, we got a Red Rebel we, Rob in the lobby. We got a Red Rebel. We got yeah, a Dobbs and a Red Rebel. That means so we I have don't know. exactly one unfortunate soul <laughs> that doesn't know what's going on in the lobby. Um, but um, it'll be interesting. I think that Tom hit hit it dead on. They're probably afraid of item idlers once it goes free to play. So this is yeah. absolutely going to be that. And also, you don't unlock challenges till level 20. So they're also making it so you mm -hmm. can't just make hatchling accounts and just start grinding these challenges out left and right. Okay. That's good. Yeah. So, I mean, this is two weeks in a row where they had a really big drop on fundamental... Oh, this one's a fundamental. Well, outside of gameplay, fundamental changes. Yeah. <laughs> with the way they're reworking tournaments, the way they're reworking drops and challenges. So really the only two things I can think of would left to talk about. Well, I mean, guess three things, the rank system, the, uh, how they're going to do season passes, which will probably be the same. And if they're going to do anything with clubs, because for the love of God, they've still yet to do anything with clubs. Yeah. I'm like hoping they fix clubs. There's a lot that they could do with it that they just haven't. There's a lot of potential that they could do. You could have a club fucking rank. And have club yeah. matches, which would be awesome. I think that's something that people have been clamoring, clamoring for for a long time. Yes. I would love to have like club in houses. Like you go to a menu, you say, Hey, I would like to join the club in house. And then whoever in the 72 PC club can just 
randomly join various in-houses games and like a certain older so, so to speak of hey this is everyone who's in our club playing right now they kind of have something like that i don't i've never utilized it but there's something in there for inviting the club so i don't know if that's just for private matches or what but that's also for the initiator not for someone straggling in yeah and they also need to raise the cap from 20 people oh yeah way sure. too long but um that's enough about rocket league i've, I've had enough of that um <laughs> i've had enough i can't Tom, take any more you were the only one with any other unique games what do you got for us tom's <laughs> always got us yeah. with the games list all right like, i played some other shit but it was Marvel. old stuff okay here Tom. We, here we First, go let's do it let's talk hades hades, let's hear about hades. i remember it's, hades no. so i played mario 64 last night in vr it was actually way better than it sounds um so somebody made a custom Pavlov VR map, and Pavlov is the, the VR sort of Counter-Strike game. It's less of a love letter and more of a carbon copy. Yes. Um, and they made Mario 64. You got to the castle, there was a bunch of different levels, and your job was to literally jump around and do VR platforming to get stars to unlock new levels to, you know, run around with, with all your, your friends. Um, and... It was actually kind of cool. Like the fidelity wasn't wasn't quite there. Like you can tell somebody like by hand made a bunch of these maps, and some of the quality is like outstanding. Some of it's just like yeah, you kind of rushed through this part. But the fact that like some person created a bunch of Mario sixty four levels in this VR shooter, and then a bunch of custom scripting to get it to all play nicely together is really outstanding. Um, I was super impressed. I didn't finish everything, but damn, was it cool. Uh, it's a little rough around the edges, but if you want to do Pavlov VR platforming and Mario 64 levels, this is really the only way you can do that. Nothing about platforming in VR sounds good. <laughs> I don't care what you say. Nothing fine. about platforming sounds good. You have to absolutely have your VRC legs. Like, I... It wasn't it wasn't super fun. I wouldn't play an entire game made like this, but uh you know, would I go back to this custom map? Hell yeah, I would. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Um I also played a uh some team deathmatch in Pavlov, which why am I talking about that? That sounds boring as hell. The map was this big ass, like open area western battle royale style map with a bunch of different hiding places. But here's the kicker. It was dark, it's nighttime, and there's like this Silent Hill-esque penetrating fog everywhere. So it turned the game into this big-ass, like, first-person VR stealth shooter where we were all sneaking around the map trying to find silencers that were scattered everywhere so we could pick people off in the woods. Like, we were literally sneaking around it was part stealth game part horror game as we're sneaking through the woods and if you die it doesn't spawn you with your team it just spawns you somewhere on the map so now you have to solid snake your way through oh. this big ass map <laughs> try to find your squad again like sneaking around knifing people behind bushes there was one guy i snuck up on him and i i had a deagle it's a big ass loud pistol right and i was like yeah i i could fire at him but like this guy's got a big ass shotgun there's no way I win this. So I tailed him for a while. Like I'm ducking behind trees. And then finally I see him go into this, this house. I pull out my knife and I stand there right outside the house. And he jumps out and there's proximity voice chat in Pavlov. He screams. I freak out. I drop my knife and he shotguns me in the face. But God damn, that was one of the coolest multiplayer moments in VR I've experienced in years. Holy shit. Was that cool? I am going back tonight, God damn it! <laughs> Did you have to change your undies after that one? Uh, yeah, just about. It was, like, it was so great because it's it's a spooky map which leads you to play in a spooky way. It totally changed the entire dynamics of how you feel when you play, like, Pavlov or, or any kind of game like that. that. It wasn't this power trip. It was the, oh, God, I hope they don't find me. And God forbid you <laughs> run into the other team's full squad. Like, mm -hmm. you're just fucked murder i love the great. idea of that spooky foggy low visibility 
first person shooter thing. Like that that just sounds like a really, really cool combination of things. It was yeah, excellent. It's like a really neat atmosphere. Um what? On Earth? What else you got, Tom? Tom's having a if he's he's having issues there's one other thing i did play i forgot about it was actually saturday night after the cast oh yeah um spent a lot of time a lot of time in fucking tire unite finally tried out the um mario kart mode yeah it's actually pretty good is it good i mean for a tire unite game it's really good i i say that as in like tire unite it's one of those things where you just kind of smile about a little bit of the jank but no, it's, it was pretty fucking good. I enjoyed it. I was bad, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> and then I played some of the other modes in there I've never played, like laser tag. That was a lot of fun. And same with like um, the infected mode. That game's got a lot of possibility. Like I've never played some of those other modes. Sorry about that. Discord was <laughs> telling me that it paused my Spotify music since I was talking so long. And I don't know why it's doing that guy i didn't think it needed to yell at me because i was listening to music while playing games but that's how dare you tom how dare you i talked for longer than 30 seconds and spotify is like nah that's too long dog (laughs) it cut me off it's doing the job you've always wanted to do yourselves um so yeah uh, I'm gonna have to stream some some Pavlov tonight and show you guys that map because it was fucking great. It also helped that we were in a server with um, it was just like five v five, so very few people. The map was big enough that sometimes you just didn't see anyone, and then you hear some footsteps and you stop and you wait. <laughs> like, and I think we're good. And then you take a couple steps and you hear some more steps. Like oh shit, no. Nope you and the other guy are moving at the same time and then you turn a corner and you see the name tag above some guy's head you're like oh shit he's on my team god damn it (laughs) i actually rounded the corner and got blasted by one of my teammates we were sure we were sneaking up on a guy on the red team uh no we were both blue players and we both were scared so just popped around the corner and he shot me (laughs) yeah i'm gonna have to watch this this sound that sounds like a lot of fun Tom should stream some of that. Um, we Tom can watch him put his pants I live. <laughs> I should. Uh, actually, if you guys wanted to see me piss my pants live, uh, I can stream the um, the uh, PT Silent Hills experience in Half-Life Alex. I will actually try to play through it this time. Yes. I would watch that. Okay. I love that. Like, tonight. Tonight! Um... Unless there's um, D&D, which I don't think there is. I think we're doing it tomorrow. But yeah, sometime this weekend. Okay. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Pathfinder Kingmaker. So it's an old, well, not super old, but a few years old. Uh, CRPG, standard Baldur's Gate style. Pause in the middle of combat. Choose your moves. Move your people around. Uh, kind of like less tactical than Divinity Original Sin 2 but way more tactical than something like um, something like Fallout, I would say. Like the OG Fallout, not not the Bethesda Fallouts. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool. One thing that they've got in the game, which is a big, big part of the game, is this kingdom management. And to manage your kingdom, you actually have to, like when you're traversing the world map, you have to make it all the way back to home base to take care of stuff or else the kingdom will fall into ruin and it forces you to constantly balance your time between doing quests and then coming back home to making sure, you know, stuff doesn't fall apart while you're gone. Um, it's interesting, but I fucking hate it. It's got that Majora's mask Pikmin style time pressure where you're like, I don't know. I just, I just want to explore this area. But if I do, I'm burning daylight and I've only got so many days to finish the main quest. What, what am I going to do? And now I'm halfway across the world map. And is this too far? And what if something happens and I'm too far away and I can't get back in time? So the game graciously um, gives you these, these options that says, hey, kingdom management, how hard do you want to make it? And one of the options is just fucking do it for me. <laughs> so I don't want to play this part of the game. It actively, like, I know it's the way it's supposed to be played, right? There's, there's a way the designers intended me to play this game. I don't want to play it that way. 
I turned off the option and guess what? It stays out of my way. I'm enjoying myself. I'm running around doing quests without all the awful time pressure of trying to manage a kingdom and do the quests. I've now just got timers for quests, which is totally fine with me. It, yeah, it's a good like, accessibility really wanted, option. Uh, yeah, like I, I wanted to talk to you guys a bit about have you seen other games give you options to play games the wrong way and did it make it better? Like, you know, Josh hates Mr. X in Resident Evil 2. He got a mod to turn off Mr. X and he loved the game even more. I loved Mr. X in Resident Evil 2. I couldn't imagine turning him off, but I like it when games give you that sort of option. Yes, I, I think it's rad when they do. It's like uh, I'm a fucking safe scummer when it comes to like games like XCOM. Like my play style, I mean Tarkov's actually fixing that, but I'm a save scummer. So like I love the fact that they let you like, hey, you can save at any point and then just load it back in. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. parallels a conversation earlier we had about steak of all things. Um, and whether or not it's acceptable to put A1 steak sauce on a steak because it, you know, ruins the point of having the steak and having these extra accessibility options that completely change the fundamentals of the game. Um, yes, it might defeat the purpose of, you know, that that part of that game is specifically there to make you feel or act a certain way. And by taking that out of the game, you're technically soiling the experience that you're supposed to have with the game. Or you're enjoying it more and that doesn't matter. So, so yeah. you're kind of treading that line between, all right, you're 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 not experiencing what you're supposed to experience during the game, and that might ruin the game or ruin what the game is trying to be. But at the same time, if it lets you enjoy it, then, you know, let people enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy it how you want. You what might, hurts, you might does... completely miss the point of the game, but you also just might have a good time. This might be weird. Um, I agree. Like, especially if it enables you to enjoy the game, I agree. But if it, I don't want to say it irks me, but I feel the need to say something to someone if they, by default, enable one of these abilities that has it playing the game, possibly not how the developer intended, but then they come out not liking the game because of it. Yeah. So we're yeah, like, you have sure. a jaded view of the game because you were doing something that wasn't really how the game was designed to be played. If you're listening to a new album by a critically acclaimed artist, but you're listening to it on laptop speakers in the other room while you're trying to solve a Rubik's Cube and not really paying attention, you can't really judge the album for what it is. Yeah. And that, that's, I think, my biggest thing is, like, I know I was, I don't want to say a dick, Scott, but I, I kind of harped on Scott because of the way he was, the, the way he plays games is he will hammer out everything if there's a blip on the map that's some bitch is doing it right now <laughs> and on uh like horizon zero dawn i felt that that kind of stuff can ruin the pacing of the story mm -hmm. so like that that's one of those kind of things where play it how you want as long as you're enjoying it mm -hmm. but i can feel that sometimes that can actually ruin an experience depending on what you do it's true sure. yep. another good uh call out for a game that does this is soma where this was originally yes. a mod to turn off the the, uh, you know, fatal or fatality, the, um, it didn't turn off the monsters, but it turned off them being able to kill you. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually it made its way as an officially supported option for the devs where they said, yeah, it's not, not how we originally envisioned it, but if you want to play in, you know, quote, safe mode, here you go. Here's a checkbox. Yeah. Um, and the, I, uh, that would have yeah. prevented me from quitting halfway through when I got stuck in this, Fucking underwater hellhole with a thing that instant killed me every six times. The terrible thing about horror games is that, like, okay, you're terrified, you're scared, and you die, and oh no, that's awful. And then you come back for the second time, and you're kind of scared, and then you die, and then you're just kind of miffed, and then you come mm -hmm. back the third time, you're just like, look, just how how the fuck can I cheese get away from you? I'm not scared anymore. You've already killed me. And then by the fifth time, you're just mad, and that's how <laughs> I came away from Soma. Is I was just like, I. I'm stuck because of this glitchy fucking pathing system. I'm not it's, scared. I'm just pissed off. I get infuriated with myself when this happens, but I love games that recognize that you're getting your ass kicked. And after the fourth or fifth time of reloading, like, hey, do you want us to take the difficulty down? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a big middle finger to me. 
But don't tell me that. Kind of nice. Go go full Resident Evil 4 and just do it. Like go in the background, dynamically shift your difficulty. If you know I'm having a, a hard time, like ride that line, man. Resident yeah, but Evil 4 with this dynamic difficulty. I, I don't like that. Happen. Yeah, but would you want that to happen in Dark Souls? No, because the point of Dark Souls is overcoming that challenge that is so unbelievably unsurmountable until you realize it isn't. Mark down the date and time. There's been a Dark Souls reference in the podcast <laughs> not made not by me. Not made by Tom. But it's a valid but one, right? Because it's the first game that comes to mind. Tom was saying. Yeah. But in the case of yeah, Soma, like, I mean, yeah. one of the biggest complaints people had about the game was that the monster encounters could have been better or... Um, were more frustrating than they were just difficult. Yeah. Um, so the safe mode, and I actually started playing that safe mode version. And I think where Soma excels more so than, you know, I mean, it has the, the tense, Oh no, I don't want to get chased or seen, you know, monster encounters or whatever, which are pretty standard for horror games and stuff. I think the real bread and butter with Soma in context of a horror game is more so atmosphere existential dread and then just the story itself so i think by turning off those monster encounters yes you you lose some in, of the tension in those encounters but i don't think you're missing the best part of the game and that's what? good like it, it would be hurtful and just kind of suck if by going to an easier mode, you ruin the experience. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that's when it came to Last of Us 2. I'll, I'll say this last bit and I'll get off this kind of topic. I wanted to go normal because I wanted to get the story. But I know that I would probably enjoy it playing on a higher difficulty just because of the intensity of the game. And I know that the higher difficulty played different in the first one. Mm -hmm. like it almost felt like two different styles of games when you went on the two different difficulty settings yeah and to to you know come to a completely different game halo right? halo on legendary is an absolutely different feeling game than halo on normal halo on normal you feel like the spartan badass you're in there like kicking everyone's ass left and right and you walk away feeling like the most powerful thing in the world you play on legendary you're you're getting through on the skin of your teeth, man. Like that is not an easy walk in the park kind of game. There's, there's no power fantasy there at that point. It's survival fantasy. Uh, and I, but, I like both of the feelings. Yeah. It's just that it, and it's also fun. I like that about game designs and when it's done right, that it'll actually give you a different feel of the game based on the difficulty yeah. while still fundamentally being the same game. Absolutely. Either way, other games. I've got. I will say that and then throw it at Tom again. <laughs> yeah, I have got uh, one more game to talk about, um, and that is Hades, the uh, the rogue light from Super Giant Games. Um, this is really fucking good. Like, you know how how deep you guys got into Isaac. I don't yeah. know if I'm gonna get that deep into Hades, but. It's looking to be that way. I'm definitely going to play more tonight. <laughs> Fucking love that game. There is, there's just so much to it. There's, and it's, it's not like an overwhelming amount of content. Like uh, content, like for Isaac, if you've been there and played consistently since day one to the present day, there's a bunch of stuff, but you've been able to grow with it. Like when I go to Binding of Isaac because I don't have that amount of time in the game it's frankly over fucking whelming man like i've got to have 75 wiki tabs open just to understand the the item interactions of what's going to happen when i mix these nine things that i've never heard of before and this brand new one that came out last week um <laughs> or, or this item that you just like picked up that seemingly did absolutely nothing but you know it did something and that something might matter at some point <laughs> I exactly. at one point had a bookmark of a place called uh, like Isaac God. It was out of UK or something. It had every yeah. item. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but it was a that's, monstrous that's, screen. I mean, that's common with Isaac. Yeah. It's a wiki so game. So with, with Hades, it's got a lot of content, um, but it doesn't feel overwhelming. They're just about to release the 1.0 of the game. Um, which I'm really excited about. They've been holding back the the true ending because right now it doesn't have one. It's been early access and they've been trying to finish it. 
What makes Hades super unique in the roguelite space is that it's got a really good story. Uh, and the way it tells the story is baked into the gameplay. Um, so you're, I know I've talked about this before, but as a quick refresher, you're Zagreus, you're the Prince of Hades, and you're like, fuck you, Dad, I'm leaving home. He's like, no, you don't. And then he <laughs> kills you, and every time you die, you respawn back in Hades, back in dear old Dad's house. And every time you die, it's just like, well, fuck, I guess I'll try again tomorrow. Um, and you've got the Olympian gods helping you out. Like, Zeus is like, come on, dude, like, get out of there. Let's go party. Um, it's it's really neat. So every time you die, you unlock a little bit more story content. And you get a little bit more, like, in-game currency to unlock upgrades and new weapons and items. And, like, every every so often, you'll get, like, different powers from the gods or something that's a little bit more powerful than what you've seen before. And you'll get just a little bit farther. And it hits this perfect roguelike balance between you're making incremental progress and you've always got something new around the corner without it feeling super cheap. Like if you're just throwing away runs, you're not really getting anywhere. But if you're playing, you're always making teeny tiny bits of progress while getting better at the game itself. Um, so it sounds I, like it's a uh, rogue legacy ask your character slowly gets better more than an Isaac character or Isaac where you unlock more stuff and you get better yourself. Yes. Hades is absolutely on the rogue light side of the genre as opposed to rogue like. There is a continual progression system in place. Okay. Or several, rather. So yeah, I, I would highly recommend this game. Um, Super Giant's done a fantastic job, and god damn, the soundtrack and art style are just fantastic. Yeah, play. Yeah. Um, you actually gifted me this. I plan I on getting this installed to try. I'm, I'm going to admit something. I gifted it because I needed to give them more money. <laughs> nah. No clip. No clip has been doing uh, like little documentaries on the development of Hades for a while now, and their most recent one, uh, yeah, the Super Giant Studios got broken into. They got they got burgled pretty, oh, pretty no. bad, and they've they've been having a rough go of it. Like they're an indie studio right they don't have a shit ton of money to throw around and they're they're not having a good time I'm like god damn i paid you guys 20 bucks for this game forever ago i'll, I'll just buy it again i'm just like okay who doesn't have it oh Irk would like this game so i i gave you that and then i felt better so there dobby's <laughs> calling out he did a similar thing with children of morda ah <laughs> uh. right I'm, i am all about uh like if you want to see indie indie devs thrive, yeah, sure. I'm gonna give that shit to everyone I know. I I don't feel that way exclusively about indies. Like I I will do that with any game if I'm enjoying it. I will put money into the game. Well, yeah, but I mean, there's there's a difference between gifting somebody. There's a difference to the developer, to the financial yeah. side of the developer. It's a bigger impact. Gifting Assassin's Creed Origin, or Children of Morta, or Binding of Isaac, or you know other very small games by tiny studios, right? If you're a mega conglomerate with a bazillion dollars in revenue per year, I don't really feel the need to gift you or gift copies of your games. If you're some dude who's like sold seven, yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure other people. You like say this. that, but if games don't sell well, people lose jobs. So, I mean, it's still the net same, still I, the same net. Yeah. Like EA is shameless about fucking dropping devs that start doing bad. But at the same time, do you really want to reward that behavior by giving them money? It's not so much that you're insuring against it. It's that you're saying, I believe in the products and how you build them. You're insuring it happens by not. Ah. Yeah. Do, you, do you see that spin? No. I'm... <laughs> There's no way. No, it's just, I, I, it's a good thing to do. Support what you like, regardless of what it is. Yeah, I highly recommend trying out Hades. Uh, I think it's really, really excellent, especially if you like action roguelite games. Um, it's fantastic. And it saves every room, so you can just play it and walk away in the next couple minutes. That's the longest amount of time you'll need to stick with it. Yeah, that's the one bad thing about Isaac. Um, it's floor-based, so eventually it got to the point where it saves at the floor, if I recall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because initially you might be trapped in a 40, 45-minute run in the original game. 
Um, now, and luckily you now you can it. just kind of you can jump out and pick up where you left off. Yeah, so if if you defeat all the enemies, pick up the thing, walk into the next room, hit escape, and quit. You will pick up right there when you leave off. Nice. So right now, I'm mid-run. It's great. I didn't have to think about it. Josh is just like, hey, you want to play Rocket League? I'm sitting there playing Hades. I'm like, yeah, all right. Give me a second. That's it. Cool. We're ready. Took that amount of time. All right. Fantastic. Are we? We're, we're through the sections. Anyone have any other games? Or Tom, I know you played off Tower Unite while you were having that issue. I was talking about it. Is there anything you wanted to call out about that before we move on? I'm not... I, oh, the, the Mario Kart mode in Tower Unite um, was way better than I thought it should be. I mean, <laughs> it's still kind of kind of buggy, definitely cheesy. But no, goddamn, for a game as cheap as Tower Unite to have all of those game modes baked into it, it's way better than it should be. I enjoyed yeah, I was, my time. I was stating I never played half of those. <laughs> and uh, like yeah. Laser Tag was really good. The Infected Tag mode was, was fun. Awesome. I could use a little reworking, but the base of the game's good. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, there's one more thing about Hades. It comes with this list of prophecies, which um, incentivizes you to not pick the same thing every time. So if there's a new power, it'll have like a scroll behind it. It'll say, the you know, the, the oracles have professed that you would use this power at one point during your escape attempts. And you're like, oh, cool, we'll do that. And it gives you like tiny rewards for checking off items. Um, so the game actively incentivizes you playing in different ways. I never play with the bow. When I got back, my bow was glowing purple. It said, hey, if you use the bow, we're going to give you a 20% bonus on this in-game uh, item or this in-game currency. So it incentivizes you to switch stuff up every now and again. It's really nice. Yeah, and it keeps it fresh, especially on games that are run-based. You need to keep it fresh. If you don't yeah, keep it fresh, yeah. your players are going to drop the fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's all I have. All that's all that said, time to get to news. And with the news, we're going to start with the corporate dick measuring competition. So, Tom, what's new in oh. that? Oh, God. Why did I not prepare for this? Okay. So, Microsoft put out a letter and they said, hey, guys, we hate Apple, too, and gave that to the courts uh, because Microsoft has been trying to push out their uh, streaming stuff. But Apple says, if you sell DLC through this on our platform, you want 30%. Microsoft said, fuck you. Oh, no, we can't do this on iOS. And then is piling on the corporate dick waving. Um, Apple threatened to cancel all things, including the Unreal Engine accounts for Epic Games, which would severely impact all indies and really every dev studio using the Unreal Engine, which is really fucking bad. So Epic told the courts, they said, hey, this is going to hurt everyone, not just us. Courts issued an emergency stay and they said, okay, Apple, you can kill Fortnite because it, like to TLDR all the legal briefings, because believe it or not, I did read them. Um, the judge basically said, this is a problem of your own making Epic Games. You knew the terms, you decided to ignore the terms, and now you're being punished under contract for violating those terms. Apple, feel free to kill Fortnite. You cannot though the general epic games account or uh you know epic uh, i think it's epic international uh, account that has all the unreal engine dev tools so feel free to murder fortnite don't hurt indie devs and apple said cool so they have now canceled uh epic's fortnite accounts you can no longer update fortnite on the uh the ios store and yeah that's about where we're at now um epic is throwing a big fortnite tournament called save fortnite and they're trying to rally social media around corporate dick waving. It's it's a goddamn mess. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. But there's been development, and now there's starting to be sides drawn. So we'll see how this continues to shape out. Ah, uh, yay! I can actually see more publishing houses maybe getting involved if Microsoft was willing to throw the hat in. But neither here nor there. When more happens, we'll get back to it. Um. Call of Duty uh, recently came across some scrutiny. And recently because they actually at Gamescom uh, had a trailer showing off the new uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. But um, footage was changed in that for a lot of places because uh, the Tiananmen Square, or I got I can never say it. Tiananmen, Tian Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square footage that was in it. 
So yeah. I don't know the so, it's about what was it just uh, blacked or just cut out. It's because Activision is in bed with Tencent, who is owned by China, and China wants to pretend that the Tiananmen Square massacres didn't happen. And so when the devs used that footage in their trailer, the corporate investors said, ah, oh, no, you can't do that. You're going to make our Chinese overlords angry. And then Activision had to take it out. That's the TLDR. Well, there we go. Um, there we go. That said, um, I did a quick hits on Black Ops World, or... Um, yeah, the Black Ops. So if you're interested in more information on that, go to check or that out. As a whole, we don't really cover it much. We have some people to play it, but we don't. Moving on. Uh, what we got is a new game mode for The Last of Us 2 called The Last Stand. Not a game this mode. is insane. Not a game mode. Not a game mode. Oh, that's not the game mode. I'm I, my stuck heads on the game mode where it's uh one life. Oh no no no. Yeah, sorry. So, Left for Dead One had this map that was never ported to Left for Dead Two called the Last Stand. Um, Valve has historically worked with the community themselves for updates, uh, except there was uh, an issue with TF2 way back in the day where. Some people basically scribbled their names all over the you should pay me this much document. And they just as a way to get rich without actually doing anything. Like they gave themselves titles like director and supervisor and then took over 50% of the money generated by this TF2 event, the, the invasion update. Uh, so Valve said, nah, fuck this. We're never working with the community again. Uh, until now, where the community has developed uh, and Valve is working with them to release an update to Left 4 Dead 2 to bring these maps into the game. It's an official Valve sanctioned update built by the community for the community. And it's really neat. Yeah, that's my bad. I was confusing that with the new difficulty coming into The Last of Us 2. Oh, no. Whoops. <laughs> but, okay. Moving on. Um, I actually don't have the news up right now because I'm a fucking horrible, horrible person. Did you did you see the little nightmares too, Irk? Oh my god, it oh, looks so yes. good. Thank you. Yes. They're really leaning um, into the horror part of it. It seems like it's gonna be darker and creepier. I never played the first one. It looks, it's, it's, it's it looks really interesting, good. but it looks good. Yeah, um the first one was really cool. It's kind of uh uh I don't know, it's like a the spooky platformer puzzler thing um the, but the the main appeal is again the the atmosphere and then like the it's got that kind of inside-esque like storytelling where you don't get any story you get environmental cues and you can kind of piece stuff together from that um but it was it was a really really good game that i'm looking forward to the sequel for sure I don't know what this is called. I know there's an exact word for it, and I don't know it off the top of my head. But, like, you're tiny. The world is large. Yes. Like, um, I love that feel. Uh, Army Men, as silly and goofy as that game was, yeah. had that feel. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely has that feel. And, and some, of the, strike. some of the enemies are very, very creepy. It's got sort of a... Uh, I don't want to say... I guess kind of a dark Tim Burton disturbing vibe to it. I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I think it's a fair way to describe it. Like, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the words. Not yeah. cartoony, but it's got a little bit of over exaggerated. <sighs> yeah, over exaggerated and features and stuff. Like it's dark, but at the same time, almost. Yeah, and know. it kind of has like some dysmorphia, body dysmorphia kind of stuff. Like I've seen one thing with like, like a Slender Man kind of guy stretching out from the mm -hmm. shadows and stuff. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. Yeah, it's really good. I would very highly recommend playing the first game, and I'm very definitely going to play the second game. No questions yeah. asked. And then uh, we got one more bit of news. Um, summer games done quick recently happened and raised 2.3 million in charity. 
Um, is that a new record for them, Tom? Or is that just what they got this time? No, I don't know. It's a shit ton of money, but I don't know if it's a record. Yeah, like I could see them actually generating more money than normal this year. But I, without knowing, I'm not going to say anything. But yeah, that's a lot of money for charity. And these events are really cool. Uh, so if you don't know, Awesome Games Done Quick and the sister series Summer Games Done Quick um, are speedrun extravaganzas. And all the money donated goes right to charity. There's a bunch of people, a bunch of companies like throwing their their um, you know hat in the ring and donating themselves and giving away prizes for, for raffles. They have to donate money to get into. Like Bethesda has always been there. Um, you know, there's uh, id Software was giving a bunch of Doom Eternal swag out this year. Um, so if you if you donate a certain amount, you can uh, be thrown into the chance to get that stuff. So it's really cool to see this happen. Also, why I know we talked about this before, but they did the first ever VR speed run at Summer Games Done Quick this year, which was Half Life Alex completed in a half hour. And it was awesome Jesus. watching him do that. <laughs> it is nuts. Holy shit. You like said that something was a about them workout what he was doing like crawling all over the floor to get to places you shouldn't be able to get to and stuff yeah yeah it was absolutely insane all right yeah. with all that you fellas got anything else you want to throw out there um take Pl- your stake how you like it fuck the haters yes play, play little nightmares Actually, I, I need to do something. I, I still got to finish Last of Us 2, though, before I get any new games. Yes, you All do. Right. I will at some time. I promise. <laughs> and I will. Like I said, I'm going to stream every bit of it. So I, I'll get back to it. But for the time being, let's do the rundown, shall we? Run down. Um, so for all of you watching us live right now, thank you. We love it. Love you all in the chat. Love it when you snipe us. But if you missed something or you're just looking for some smaller bites or just some quick flashy news in a new segment called Hit Quick Hits, um, you jump over to our YouTube, uh, 72 Pin Connector over there. But if you're over there watching us, you should jump over to Twitch live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and be part of the chat, be part of the games, and have some fun with us on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. We also have our social media, 72 PC underscore official. We do uh, daily plays of the day, as well as some sporadic tweets around Rocket League, other games, and some different stuff. So you should follow us there for some updates. And we have our Discord. The link's below if you're on our Twitch. If you're on our YouTube, I think we have it in our banner. So you should definitely go join the group. A lot of really fucking cool people in there. A lot of variation in games. If you like to game and you like to just hang out, this is a place for you, I promise. And finally, we just said a whole lot of stuff. Might be hard to remember. So just go to 72pinconnector.com. Everything's linked there, including our merch store. Buy merch. Um, Buy the merch. That said, fellas, I think that's all we got this week. It's all the things. Yeah. Play Little Nightmares. Yeah, Little Nightmares. Eric, finish Last of Us 2, please. Yes, I need to do that so we can do our spoilers. Do it. All right. Do it. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. Bye. Bye. Love you. Drive safe.